Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna play a little bit with some colors. We will try to make this Phalaenopsis, which is clearly white, into a blue Phalaenopsis. Now many of us have seen in the stores those really beautiful Phalaenopsis that are blue. And I think they're called something like Mystic Blue, something like that. And I've seen quite a lot of people purchasing them. Downside is, they're a little bit expensive. Well, what most people don't know is that those are artificially dyed orchids. They start out as white Phalaenopsis, actually, and then they're artificially colored into various colors. The most common one is blue, since we really don't have a lot of flowers which are blue. So today I'm gonna show you how they actually do it, attempt to color this white Phalaenopsis into a blue one as much as possible. I just wanna show you at least how easy it is to obtain them and to prove to you that those blue Phalaenopsis you see are not real. Rarely will you see a proper true ink blue orchid. Unless they're artificially dyed, they simply don't exist, at least the ones that we can grow in a home. Okay, first I'll tell you how they do it and then we'll proceed on making the arrangements. So the color they use is a food dye. It's a non-toxic, in this case blue food dye, that will not spoil the flowers or kill the orchid. For a while I thought they water them with blue water, but that's not the case. What they do is actually make a puncture in the flower stem as it's forming and the food dye is actually made available to the cut in the stem. Now, it is not injected in any way, it is simply left there for the orchid to suck on her own. Because as flower spikes develop, the orchid will push a lot of nutrients and a lot of sap. So everything above the puncture wound will take the color of the food dye. This is why the leaves are not necessarily blue, it's just the flower spikes and the flowers. To obtain a very vivid blue color, they do this procedure while the flower spike is growing before the buds start to develop actually. If the buds are already developed, and furthermore the flowers are opened, the color will not be so vibrant, it will not be even, because the orchid already pushed nutrients into those buds, into those flowers, and they will already obtain the natural pigment of the orchid. So on my orchid, I do still have a few buds that I hope will get blue, but the other flowers will not get very, very vivid blue because they're already formed, they don't need as much sap, they just need a little sap for maintenance reasons. So probably on these flowers we will not have a vibrant color, but the buds might be a little bit more vibrant. Now usually white Phalaenopsis are used because every pigment will look bright and vivid against a white canvas. But I did see a few orchids with purple patterns that were dyed blue and it really didn't look all that pretty. So originally a blue Phalaenopsis is white, the reason why I chose mine as a white. So now that we have the theory out of the way, let's get to work. Now the first thing I want to do is make a puncture wound on the flower spike. Usually they do them away low so you don't see them. But I don't have too much space to work with down low and since this is not a display orchid, it's just my experiment, I can make the puncture wound somewhere here. It will be very visible but that's what we want. So I have an X-Acto knife, it is very thin and very sharp and has a pointy tip. This is what we want. So all we want to do is try to make a sort of a triangular shape, if you will, inside the stem. I've never done this before, so I might be a little clumsy. But there we go, I think a little deeper. There you go, it looks a little bit unsightly, but I do want to make it deep enough to get inside the vessels that transport the sap further to the tip. Okay, so I actually tried to make a funnel around this cut wound using some plastic and some tape. No matter what I did, it kept dripping, so I resorted to something else. I suspect that if I had duct tape, it would have been a different story, but I think this will do as well. So what I did was I soaked a piece of cotton, it's actually one of those makeup discs, in the food dye, and then I wrapped it around the flower spike and actually it is touching the wound just to make it stay there. Now since the cotton is absorbent it keeps the wound moist with that pigment but it doesn't let the food dye drip all over the place like the funnel did. So I think 
think this will have to do. The most important thing is for that wound to not callous over, so it shouldn't be left dry and also the food pigment needs to touch it at all times. I left a little bit of the cotton outside because it might evaporate and dry out in a few days, so I can put a few more drops just to maintain the wound wet and to maintain, of course, the pigment on the cut wound. So theoretically, what should happen now is for my flowers and buds to start turning blue. As I was saying, I'm not expecting a very, very flashy color and vivid color because I should have done this sooner, but I believe we will be able to see some blue in this flower. So I'll make updates daily. We'll see how the flowers look each day. And to better show you right now, my flower is white, completely white apart from that lip which is uh, kind of red but i am interested in the petals actually going blue so i'll see you guys tomorrow to see if there's any difference okay so this is day two and already we have results my orchid is starting to become blue and i actually visited the orchid last night and it was already starting to show signs of blue so the process is actually really really fast now here's the funny thing this is the spike we worked on this is the spike that has the cotton and it's blue but remember i told you the funnel experiment failed and it started to drip it colored some of the roots it got into the pot and as a result i have some blue pigment inside the leaves I think this one shows it better. I'm not sure how it shows on the camera, but I see traces of blue, particularly here. Not only the leaves, but the other flowers just a little bit as well. I did not want this to happen because I wanted to use this orchid as an experiment for a different subject and this kind of makes it unusable, but it's okay, <laughs> we have other orchids. So as I was telling you yesterday, initially I thought they water the orchids with blue water, but what this will do is actually color the leaves as well and also the roots and that will kind of give it away, make it unsightly. So what they do is actually make the puncture wound in the spike and they actually don't have as much drip as I did. This is why the leaves are still green, but I did see a few orchids with uh, paint dripping on the roots as well. So some of the roots were colored as well as some of the leaves and the flower spikes. But the idea is to maintain the leaves green and the flowers blue. So from this point of view, you can color the orchid in both ways, but one will color the entire orchid while the other will only color the flowers. So today I'm gonna put some more dye on this cotton and see how blue I can get this orchid. And let me just show you the back of the orchid. This is quite interesting because like this you can see the veining of the flowers. It's actually the channels of sap. And as you can see, the last bud is the bluest one. So yeah, I'm gonna add some more pigment and see how blue we can make this orchid. Okay, so this is day four in the experiment and what we have here is quite the blue phalaenopsis. I'm not sure if we can make it even bluer than this. This procedure is usually done when the flower spike forms, when the buds form, so you have a more even coloring, but you will find orchids that look something like this. More like it has a blue veining rather than a solid color. And as the buds open, you will probably notice the flower is getting lighter and lighter simply because the dye was removed. So this is how they make blue phalaenopsis orchids. Now I've also seen some other colors around such as oranges or reds, also greens, but the most common color is of course blue. Now if you see these orchids in the stores and you're not sure or not convinced that they're artificially dyed, since usually the tag doesn't necessarily specify it, all you need to do is look for that puncture wound somewhere on the flower spike. In my case, the puncture wound is pretty high on the flower spike. Usually you will not find it so high. It will be lower on the flower spike. But yeah, take a look at the flower spike. If you see the puncture wound, things are pretty clear. Also, in some cases, the dye just drips from the flower spike onto the orchid herself and you might be able to see some blue roots, which obviously should not happen on a non-dyed orchid. And also, if the dye gets on the roots, it will get inside the leaves as well as the orchid absorbs water. So in my example, you can see some veining on the leaves. In reality, it's even more pronounced than that. Now you know how they do it. And as far as what you should expect, well, the orchid being that it's white, the next blooms will be white, actually. They will not be blue anymore. However, if the paint dripped inside the pot and the orchid absorbed it together with the water, 
The next flowering might have a slight hint of blue as well, and I did hear about those cases as well. But in time, the pigment will go away and the orchid will transform into a white orchid. If you're okay with that, that's perfectly fine. Now you know what you're actually purchasing. Because the bad thing is, blue Phalaenopsis orchids are so expensive compared to other orchids, and they're actually just white orchids. Now, Phalaenopsis are not the only dyed orchids I've seen in the market. I've also seen Dendrobium phalaenopsis and Dendrobium nobilis. I didn't really take a close look at them, but since they don't have thick flower spikes, I presume the puncture wound will be on the pseudobulb, which is a little bit more worrying. Flower spikes don't get infections all that easily, I presume. I've never actually had a flower spike getting infected. It's not impossible though, and blue is a color that is easily liked, and I've seen a ton of people seeing these orchids in the stores and going for them and actually believing they are truly blue but they're not and the tag will usually say blue mystique or something of the sorts, a magical name of the sorts, it will not necessarily say it is dyed. But if you are a fan of this bluish type of orchid, there are a few orchids which come close to blue. As I was saying, you will not find a inky blue orchid such as this, but you can find something close. And I have a few orchids that are purpley indigo bluish, one of them is the Vanda Pachara Delight. The Vanda Cerulea is again a sort of an indigo color, but it has a tessellation on the petals. Also in the realm of Phalaenopsis, you will find DTPS or Phalaenopsis Purple Martin. Again, it's not blue, it's just close to it. And in the Dendrobium world, there is the Dendrobium Victoria Regina. Now, if you search pictures of these orchids on the internet, you will find variations of the color. Some of them will look quite inky blue, while others will look purple. And I'll give it that some pictures are tweaked to be bluer than they actually are, but in reality, in the vast majority of cases, it all depends on the camera you're filming or taking a photograph with. And I do have an example to show you. The first time I filmed my Vanda Pachara Delight, I used an iPhone and the camera picked up that purple as a true ink blue. And no matter what I did, I could not get the true color of the orchid. Now here is the very same orchid filmed with a different camera, a camcorder in my case. And as you can see, there is a major difference in color. The second camera rendered the color a lot more true to reality. And as you can see in reality, it is pretty purple, indigo, but it is indeed a very pretty color. And if you're looking for these types of colors, check out the orchids that I just mentioned. I'm sure there are others. Just don't expect pure ink blue orchids. So this is the technique. And I was actually inspired to make this video by another video which uses a funnel. I'll link you down below to this video so you can see results from another person. But yes, this is how they do it. So alrighty guys, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you hate it and give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for daily orchid videos and plants videos and of course updates and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye! So not only my Millennium Magic is growing something here, which you know what, I suspect it's a new growth, but who knows, but she's making one on this side as well. So let's make a bet. Are these flower spikes or are they new growths? At this point, I don't know, I think they're new growths. But who knows? So let's begin. Place your bets.